I think it's more fun to be broke in Paris than to be broke in New York City. Six years ago, I moved to Paris and I had no plans of staying this long. All I knew is that I had a seven month long job contract and a mild interest in learning French. And as a naive 20 something year old would do, I packed one too many suitcases and bought a one way plane ticket to the city of light and love, or so they call it. It was my first big girl job, first big girl rent to pay, and first big girl expense. As a native New Yorker, I quickly realized that Paris was a rather affordable city to live in. I thought about this beret ironically, and now it's no longer ironic. I was no longer surrounded by the hustle culture and paycheck to paycheck lifestyle that engulfed my peers. To be quite frank, in those first few years in France, I too was still living paycheck to paycheck with my low income job teaching in a French high school. But I had fewer expenses, and so I grew to love life in France. Elle s'appelle The Queen Fatima sur TikTok. Elle a 27 ans, elle a fait une licence de théâtre aux États-Unis. Elle a étudié Shakespeare, elle est fan des comédies musicales. J'ai commencé mon TikTok parce que j'ai vu Emily in Paris comme tous les autres, et c'est pas forcément euh, ma, mon expérience ici. I wasn't, dare I say, living to work. I was working to live. I was working to enjoy the finer things in life like travel and food and experiences. All on a dime. Hi, my name is Fatima and I'm an American that lives in Paris. So it recently dawned upon me that a lot of my friends and family think that I'm wealthy because I live in Paris. <laughs> Which is so far from the truth. And I realized that they connotate living in Paris with a life of luxury and glamour, which it can be. However, Paris is a rather affordable city when you compare it to New York or London. So I am very fortunate to live in a country like France that values social welfare benefits, universal health care, essentially free education for all and strong workers protections. In this video, I would like to demystify the reality of living costs in Paris. I'm really going to emphasize living in Paris as a student. Let's get into it. Now, in the scope of this video, the price points that I'm about to share and give are not reflective of everyone living in Paris. Obviously, it's different. However, it's more or less my experience and the experiences of my friends and the people around me. That being said, I would like to break down this video in different categories. So I'll start off with housing and rent, and then I'll talk about transportation, food. I'll follow that up with health and fitness, and last but not least, I'll talk about amusement and entertainment. Speaking of which, I have tickets to the theater, theater, in 20 minutes. Legit. For starters, housing. That's the most important thing, right? People spend most of their money in housing. So if you're a student, you can opt into student housing, whether it's government funded and sponsored, like this thing called CRUS, or you can find private student housing that's also still subsidized by the government to some extent, but it's not as cheap, I would say. In a city like Paris, there are a lot of different places where you can live. There's Cité Universitaire, which is a massive, massive campus with a whole bunch of student housing. I think like thousands of students live there at a given moment. And it's not just students, it's like students, interns, apprentices, researchers, etc. It's really varied. Rent can be anywhere from like 400, 500 to 600, 700, 800. It really depends on the type of room you're getting. And because it's student housing, you might expect to have your own bedroom, but share common spaces like the bathroom, the kitchen, etc. And so it really depends. I know that some student housing, they offer all of that included into your unit. However, some places they say, nope, for 550 euros, we're gonna give you a small bedroom with a twin size bed and you're going to have to share a bathroom with everyone on your hall and a kitchen with everyone in the building. Outside of student housing, there are a multitude of options. Oftentimes people find these things called chambre de bonne, which is essentially old maids quarters in fancy apartment buildings. What's interesting about these chambre de bonne is that they're, they're really small. 
they're tiny literally a closet size like legit i've done an entire video about chambre de bonnes and how to find them and what they look like and things like that so check that out if you're interested if you're looking to live somewhere on a budget usually speaking it's better to live in the suburbs of paris you're right next to the city however you're not inside the city and so usually it's expected that rent is going to be cheaper keep in mind that it's not going to be that much cheaper in order for you to have even cheaper rent you really need to go out into the suburbs like you got to be a bit further away however if you want to live inside of paris there are a few different areas in paris that are more affordable than others and through research i found out that the 13th the 18th the 19th and the 20th arrondissement are more affordable than let's say the fifth or the first or the seventh arrondissement in short i think a sweet spot in terms of rent for a young student is probably 500 euros per month in paris However, you can find anything from like maybe 300 to like 800 and pushing up there. Now that we're on the topic of housing and things like that, I should talk about utilities. So if you have your own apartment, then the apartment's probably small. So like, a, I don't know, an apartment that measures 10 mètres carré, 15 mètres carré, 20 mètres carré, I think it should be around anything less than 30 euros per month in terms of extra utilities or like Wi-Fi, etc. In France, you can get a TV plan for 25 euros. 25 euros. In France, you can get a cell phone plan for 20 euros as well. Actually, I'm with a company that provides phone plans for two euros a month. And I had that for like a while and then I realized it was not viable for me. When I go home for like a week or two, I need data out there. And so I bumped up my plan, but I bumped it up to a plan that is 20 euros a month. So, I mean, yeah, it's not that rough. Also, what's interesting about housing is that France has this system called CAF. Essentially, it is government-funded housing assistance based on your revenue. I should explain. Let's say your rent, your student housing rent is like 600 euros a month and you live at like Cité Universitaire. If you apply for CAF and you meet their requirements, their revenue requirements, right, they might give you something like 80 euros a month. And so your rent goes down by like 500. And sometimes they pay your landlord directly, or sometimes they give that to you directly. However, that being said, applying for CAF is its own ordeal. It's incredibly arduous, I would have to say, in my personal opinion, and it's incredibly painstakingly slow. However, when it hits, it hits. And when that paycheck hits, whew. So if you're in France and you're a young student or a, a young person, etc., I would definitely apply to a CAF, even if you don't think you're eligible, because you never know. They're the ones that do, you know, the calculations and they assess your dossier. And be insistent because sometimes they lose your dossier and you have no idea unless you call them up or you send them an email and you follow up and figure out you know what's going on because it's been six months since you applied and you can apply if you live in france lawfully legally etc you don't need to be french in order to benefit from cap so in paris they have this thing called the navigo which is essentially your monthly subway card or your monthly metro card and it costs about 85 euros. They actually just hiked up the price before. It was around like 73 euros per, per month. If you're a student, you get a discounted monthly Metro card where you only pay 350 euros. And to be honest, most jobs in France will actually subsidize your monthly transportation card, your monthly transportation costs as well. And so your Navigo is still gonna be only 50% once you get a job. If you're an intern, they'll also pay for 50% of your Navigo, so it's quite nice. Also, if you're interested in traveling in France in general or around Europe, they have like special tickets or passes called like carte jeune, where essentially you can buy cheaper tickets for trains, interrails, to go from like Paris to Lille, Lille to Bordeaux. I had a friend who bought a pass that essentially allowed him to go from Austria to France, to Germany, to Switzerland. Like he traveled for a good four weeks. So food, regarding groceries, I definitely think it's different for everyone. So I can't tell you, oh, expect to pay 200 a month in groceries or expect to pay 350 a month in groceries. I think it really depends on you and how you go about your day to day. So what I will tell you is that in France, they have some expensive grocery stores and they have some not so expensive grocery stores, like anywhere really. I would say on the more affordable range there is Lidl which is my love I love Lidl you can find really really affordable groceries however that being said they're not going to have everything they're not going to have everything there's also the marché right the open-air markets that usually happen about maybe twice a week in any given neighborhood cool trick 
if you get there around closing, so maybe around 12, 1230, they might lower the prices because at the end of the day, they just want to get rid of as much stock as possible. So you might get the same fruit at a lesser price. That being said, you're not going to get the nicest fruit as like someone who went, you know, at 9 a.m. in the morning and you're not going to have, you know, an array of choices because all the great stuff is gone. There's still good stuff, but the great stuff is probably gone. Also in Paris, there are a few anti-waste apps. My personal favorite is Too Good To Go, where you can essentially buy food, meals, and groceries at cheaper prices. However, you buy them at off-peak hours and you don't really get a say-so in what you're selecting. So generally speaking, I would say if you're living by yourself and you're purchasing groceries, I would say it might cost you 40 to 50 bucks per week. And that's like a light suggestion. Now let's talk about restaurants. Let's talk about dining out. So I would say if you're gonna go to a fast food place, it's gonna cost you about 10 bucks. If you go to a restaurant, like a nice restaurant, do like 15 bucks, which is really, really nice. And my favorite, if you're a university student, university lunches at the Cruz cost three, 50, three euros and 50 cents. What? In some places they cost like just three euros. Wow. So in France, they have this really beautiful thing called the carte vitale. So the carte vitale covers about 60 to 70% of your medical costs. Yep, that's right. And if you are a resident of France, you can easily apply for one. Well, maybe I shouldn't use the word easy, if you know what I mean, because it's France after all. That being said, the card is free. It is free. You might be asking, what about the 30 to 40% cost? Well, in France, they have this thing called a um, complémentaire. Essentially, it's what complements your government given right to a carte vitale. This actually took me a couple years to understand because I didn't understand what doctors were asking me when they kept on asking me, do you have a mutual? Do you have a mutual? Do you have a mutual? I was like, what? 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 Lots of words, lots of words. Anyway, so this complementaire is essentially a mutual, which is basically another package you can buy into that helps cover the rest of your possible medical costs. Now, if you have a job in France, usually the job offers to pay for your mutuelle. Oftentimes they pair you with a really strong mutuelle. If you don't have a job or if you're like a auto entrepreneur or if you're a freelancer, you can opt into your own mutuelle. If you're a student, you can also opt into a mutuelle. For research purposes, I looked up how much a mutuelle, like Hamey costs. Like Hamey is not the only mutuelle out there. Obviously there are way more, but that's the one I use and it's the one I know a lot of my friends use. They have packages essentially ranging from nine euros and 90 cents to 46 euros and 90 cents. Obviously more expensive package is going to offer more benefits. While we're still on the topic of health, I thought it would be cool to mention that when you go to the doctors and they give you like a prescription, well, first off, when you go to the doctors, it's like 30 bucks. It ranges because there's different price points. On the low side, it's 30 bucks. The other day I paid seven euros. When they prescribe you medicine, sometimes you're paying three bucks on top of it. Like the first few times when I would actually go to the pharmacy and pay and like go and get the medicine that the, I was prescribed, I was shocked. It would be like, uh, ça sera uh, 4 euros et 35 centimes. And I was like, wait, what? Me? All of that, like all of the boxes you're giving me that, that costs four bucks? Bienvenue en France. Also, pro tip, there is a pharmacy in Paris called City Pharma and they have discounted products and they have a nice range and a nice gam. So while we're on the topic of health, I thought it would be interesting to talk about beauty. So in France, I noticed that if you have a Groupon, right, a Groupon ticket or if you get your rendezvous from like a certain third party app, you can get like Manny Petty semi-permanent, right? For 30 bucks or a Manny just for 20 bucks. If you want to get your eyebrows done, it's probably like six to 10 bucks, depending on where you go. Whether you're going to do wax or the thread method. I don't get my hair cut in salons, but I have had friends who told me that it essentially costs anywhere from like four to 70 euros. When I get my hair braided, usually costs like maybe 60 to 80 euros. Depends on where you go and what you ask for and how you ask for it and what length you want. So it really does range. However, in the US, the price to get braids done is astronomical. 
astronomical like seriously i do not understand what's going on right now like it is crazy and last but not least i wanted to talk about gym memberships so there are a lot of different gyms in paris if you're in student housing you might be able to register for your student housing's gym not every place has a gym mind you at ctu they have a gym it's not the biggest gym it's not the nicest gym but it is a gym and it is affordable for students i would say if you're not interested in doing something like that or if you don't have access to a student gym and you want to just get a regular gym membership somewhere else in paris so there are a bunch of different gyms around paris i think the ones that i normally see the most are probably basic fit and neoness that being said those gyms cost about like 25 to 35 euros for their lowest offer their lowest level i think 25 30 35 bucks for a gym membership per month is not too too bad and to be honest i don't know where you're gonna find cheaper than that now let's talk about university since i just mentioned that so i had no idea when i first arrived to this country i had no idea that university was so affordable so affordable and when i say affordable i'm not saying oh it's just a couple thousand you know because like the u.s it's like sixty thousand per year a bachelor's degree costs usually about 150 to 200 euros per year. For instance, right now I'm looking at Paris 3 and Paris Sorbonne Nouvelle. Bachelor's costs 170 euros. 170 euros for the entire year, and that is it. The master's degree costs 243 euros per year, and that is it. The doctor's degree costs 380 euros. And that is it. I should also mention that recently, literally in like the past two, three years, the government decided to hike up the price of tuition for foreigners. So if you are not a EU citizen, a French citizen, then tuition fees is 10 times the rate. So instead of 170 euros for a bachelor's degree, for one year of a bachelor's degree, it is 2,770 euros at the same school. Yeah, it really sucks because when you think about it and when you look into it, a lot of the international students that come to study in France are people coming from former French colonies. Uh, so people who've already been educated in a French speaking system. And so the natural trajectory for a lot of them is to come to France to pursue higher education. And now it's incredibly unaffordable. When it comes to having fun in Paris, there is a lot you can do on a low budget. First off, I think I should note that if you're under 26, most museums, really, most museums are free. I, I think if not, all museums are free. Not only that, depending on where you go, you're going to have a under 26 discount. So keep that in mind. Sometimes it might not be an under 26 discount. Sometimes it might be like a student discount, which means you always need to bring ID so you can show people you're under 26 or you can show people that you're a student who's also under 26 etc because like i said there's a gray area there and this rule applies if you are a resident of the eu which means if you have a tita sejour if you have a visa to live in france and you're under 26 then you can benefit from this i'm a huge movie person i'm a huge television person so i love going to the movies i just love the drama of it all and so i was incredibly incredibly elated to find out that in france they have a unlimited movie ticket type of pass there are a few major movie theaters in france there's ugc mk2 gaumont et pate those are the four majors mk2 and ugc are connected they work together and then gaumont and pate are associated with each other i think that the more affordable option is mk2 and ugc and i also think that there are more of these movie theaters in Paris. So I am actually a member of their monthly movie subscription. And if you're under 26, it costs 17 euros and 90 cents, which is a nice deal if you ask me. However, if you wanna buy an individual ticket, it'll cost you four euros and 90 cents during the week. However, it'll cost you seven euros and 90 cents on the weekends. So let's say you're interested in seeing theater. In some cities in the world, going to see theater is incredibly expensive. Like New York City, unfortunately. In France in general, seeing theater is way more affordable. Now, again, under 26, there are discounted tickets. And in some cases, there are free tickets. For instance, at Audion, they have free tickets if you're under 28. At the Comédie Française, which is essentially one of the national theaters in France, they have a special offer on Mondays. Essentially, if you get there about, I think it's one hour before curtain and there's still available seats, they'll give you that seat for free. 
if you're interested in these offers, these promos, you really need to look up every single theater you're interested in and see what discount or free ticket type of situation they offer because they're all different and they all vary. The rule of thumb, if you're under 26, is usually something to help you afford a ticket. If you're a student in theater, if you're a theater student, the tickets are really reduced in certain places. Now, let's say you're not a student. Let's say you're not under 26. There are still ways to have access to a bunch of fun and cool things. For instance, museums are free the first Sunday of every single month in Paris, which is really, really cool because when you get older, you start to realize going to museums is a bit pricey. Not only that, there are times out of the year where going to the museum is free. They have this day called Journée de Patrimoine, where certain buildings that are usually like off limits, like Balenciaga or the Curing Foundation, when those places are usually closed, but they're open to the public. There's also a really cool event during the year where they open museums at night. So you can like see collections at night, which I think is so cool because not everyone has time or the energy to go on a Saturday morning or Saturday afternoon. Now, let's say you wanna go out for drinks with friends, which is something that usually costs a whole lot of money depending where you are and like what you order. That being said, in Paris, there are a lot of bars that are rather affordable and you can get like beer for cheap, wine for cheap. You can even get like niblets, like things to eat for cheap. I noticed that a lot of young people like to have apéro at their homes and so they'll invite you over and you know, you just need to bring something to consume and to share with people. And you can go to the grocery store and get $3 wine. I would say a uh, shoot for five euro at least. Like. But if you're going out to a bar, you can also just, you know, go around happy hour. Not only that, during the summertime and during the springtime, people love, 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 love to just sit outside with a bottle of wine, some cheese and whatever, and chat with their friends, enjoy the sun, enjoy the beautiful weather and things like that. Usually you'll see people sitting along the Seine or walking along the Seine during the summertime and it's such a beautiful, vibe like i love it that being said i think it's more fun to be broke in paris than to be broke in new york city i'm an artist right and living in major cities like new york london and la is challenging for someone who is trying to live an artistic career and there are fewer and fewer cities where artists are able to survive that being said i think if you are a young person living in paris you can live here on maybe 1500 euros a month So if you made it this far, thank you for watching. I really appreciate it. And let me know if you found this video helpful. And let me know if you'd be interested in learning more about finances as a foreigner in France and, you know, how I can explain a bit more of that.